Lion Hearts, it's your old pal Jordan the Lion. Today we're making our way through Michigan because we are going to visit the grave of the great Jackie Wilson, Mr. Excitement. Days with Jordan the Lion begins right now. Got a little bit of rain today. We have arrived, it's West Lawn Cemetery. I think this is technically called the town of Romulus. All right, I think I have found Jackie's grave. Uh, today we're doing a special Patreon sunglass vlog for Erica Prince. Erica, I hope you're a fan of Jackie. I think Jackie is maybe one of the greatest singers and performers of all time. And sadly, for many years after he died, he didn't even have a headstone. So actually, I went around in a big loop and all you have to do is right when you come in, make a left. He's right over here towards the street. It's this big one right over here. Mr. Excitement. He claims the reason that people called him that was because he used to perspire a lot when he performed. And he said people often said that he ended a show the way people, or he started to show the way other people ended their show. Jackie the Complete Entertainer, the bench says. Then there you can see Mr. Excitement, along with Liza. Born 1934, June 9th, and passed away January 21st, 1984. Just shy of being 50 years old. Jackie was, he was kind of Motown before Motown. He, um, in fact, he was good friends with Barry Gordy. Jackie's story is that he learned to sing with his mom in church. He loved gospel music when he was a little boy, about five or six years old, and eventually formed a little gospel group. And sadly, he fell into a, hanging out with the wrong crowd and joined a gang and ended up in a detention center. And while he was in the detention center, he would actually go there a couple of times from the time he was 12 years old to 15. While he was in there, he learned how to box. And so he decided he wanted to be a boxer. And when he came out, he started boxing and ended up at the age of 16, even though you were supposed to be 18, he won the Golden Gloves. And he said he was a good boxer. And the reason he ended up quitting was because his mom made him. <laughs> He said, no, no, seriously. He said, what she did was, he said she always came to his fights and she always sat in the same place. And he said, one time he looked out there and she wasn't out there. And he said he was getting ready to fight and his nickname was Sonny. She always called him Sonny. And he said he was out there fighting and all of a sudden he hears Sonny, Sonny, yelling from the crowd. And he turned around to look at his mom and said he got walloped three or four times and went down. That was one of the only fights that he really lost but he said he took a beating and his mom just couldn't stand seeing that and told him that she didn't want him to be a boxer anymore. So he went back to making music. And he would go on, like I said, he was one of the most electrifying entertainers there ever was. Some people might say Elvis Presley was the greatest ever. Some people might say even Michael Jackson was the greatest ever. But both of those men thought that Jackie was the greatest ever. Elvis himself would go watch Jackie when he was in the group, The Dominoes, and people would accuse later on Elvis of stealing moves from Jackie, but Jackie never cared. He said he loved Elvis and he stole from Elvis, and he said actually Elvis was a good friend of his. He said Elvis saved him when he was playing in LA early on in his career and nobody would come to the concerts. He told Elvis and Elvis showed up for two nights in a row, and when word got around that even Elvis was coming to this show, Jackie said the room was so packed you couldn't get people in there. And he also said that um, he was interviewed one time and they said, if you could do anything, you've kind of done everything already. If there's anything left in your career, what would you like to do? And he said, I'd like to be a disc jockey. I'd like to go and like talk about records and play records for people. And the interviewer said, so if we put you in a room and said you can only play music from one performer, who would you choose? And he said, Elvis, because I love Elvis's music and I, He's a good friend of mine and I could talk a lot about him and tell a lot of stories about him. And then even Michael Jackson, when he received the uh, greatest record of the year, 1984 for Thriller, he thanked Jackie Wilson, said, Jackie, wherever you are, thank you. Said that there are followers and there are pioneers and that Jackie was a pioneer. So how Jackie's career really got going was once he, he actually his cousin eventually formed the Four Tops and they had a group together first that didn't work out. 
And then Jackie was performing at a talent show and was asked to join the Dominoes. And he ended up joining the Dominoes. Their lead singer left to form the Drifters. Jackie became the lead singer of the Dominoes and then had a falling out with them. And like I said, Elvis used to come see the Dominoes. So Jackie ended up through his manager getting a deal with Brunswick for a solo deal. Now I mentioned that Jackie and Barry Gordy were friends. That was because Jackie and Barry Gordy used to box at the same time. They knew each other from the boxing world. And Barry Gordy wanted to be a songwriter. He wasn't a good singer, but he could write good songs. So he ended up writing like six or seven of Jackie's early songs and early hits. And one of those songs um, <laughs> was To Be Loved. If you know Coming to America when Akeem is w walking out in New York City singing outside and people are yelling at him, that's To Be Loved. He's singing that. And he also had a hit with Lonely Teardrops. And what's crazy is that Lonely Teardrops, Jackie said when he first heard it, it was written like a slow blues song. And of course, like I said, Barry Gordy wrote the song, but Jackie said they were working with a great arranger at the time. And between Jackie and the arranger, they came up with um, changing the tempo and putting like that Calypso beat that you know Lonely Teardrops to have. And he said when we finished the record and played it for Barry Gordy, he start, literally started crying and said, you ruined my song. How crazy is that? And then Jackie would also be known, if you're uh, from my generation, remember at the end of the Ghostbusters movie when they're playing, your love keeps lifting me higher and higher. That was another great hit that Jackie had. And Jackie said that was a song that literally was thrown in the trash. Yeah, he said literally in a recording session one day, they were listening to different songs and somebody had submitted that song higher and higher and it was uh, with a four part vocal group with a little rickety guitar and he said when I heard it they had already thrown it away they didn't want to do it but I said you know what they don't hear it right this is like a gospel song this has to be something that keeps getting bigger and ramping up continuously and Jackie had such an amazing voice I mean he was even said to have a four octave range and used to for two years trained under the vocal coach at Carnegie Hall so he could actually if he wanted to they said he could sing opera so it's kind of interesting if you know all of his hits go back and look up his version of Deck the Halls or his version of Light My Fire by the Doors he did some covers and stuff like the Beatles songs and stuff and his take on them is very different and very unique but very good so for as many hits and as much great music as Jackie had his life was completely full of turmoil and, um, and a lot of it wasn't necessarily his fault when he had his solo career. He had a man named Al Green who was his manager who helped him get his deal originally. And Al had a partner named Nat Turnipole who was younger and was the basically covering the publishing side of everything at the time. And Al was an honest man, so Jackie trusted him. And you gotta remember back in this time, the birth of rock and roll and R&B and everything, it was like they were getting all teenagers and like, young adults were the performers so these kids didn't know anything about business and they were just people were ripping them off blind but al could be trusted the sad thing was that al died and when al died nat turnipole took over uh managing and became the head of brunswick and from then on basically started robbing all of his artists and um ripping off jackie so jackie would end up never having his taxes paid he had given nat the power of attorney and Nat was stealing his money. They they ended up eventually coming after Nat Turnipole and 15 different executives from Brunswick for uh, defrauding their artists. And what they were doing basically, they said were, was that they were selling boxes and boxes, hundreds of thousands of records that were unaccounted for, that never were paid taxes and, and none of the artists were ever paid royalties. And then what they, they also would do with Jackie is when Jackie wanted to buy something, they would say, oh, just go out and buy it. We'll take it out of your money. And then when Jackie would want his money, they would say, oh, well, you owe us for this, this, and this, and you're in debt. So Jackie always thought he was in debt and developed a drug and alcohol problem for a couple of years until he found out that they were taking his house from not paying the taxes. So he started to clean himself up and um, got off all the drugs and everything and then found out, indeed, that he was being ripped off for much of his life which was so sad and he was quite a ladies man i mean he was known for you know he was such a great performer he could do the splits and he would drop to his knees and he was so charismatic that women just loved him he was supposedly shot 
by a woman he was having an affair with. Well, basically what they say happened, he claimed something different, but what the rumor is is that um, at the time, Jackie's girlfriend caught him messing around with um, Sam Cooke's ex-girlfriend, and she shot him twice. One of those bullets actually was lodged in Jackie's kidney for the rest of his life because they couldn't operate to remove it. But Jackie would say in the media, the story he told was that this was a woman who was trying to commit suicide and that he stepped in to stop her and that she ended up shooting him. And that's why she was never prosecuted or anything. But man, what a crazy life and career he had. He was had all these hits and was just pretty much broke all the time. And he ended up doing the rock and roll revival circuit towards the end of his life, which was far different than what he started out doing, like the Chitlin circuit where crowds were segregated and, and all that stuff. And they had the, the black fans on one side of the arena and the white fans on the other side. Now he was doing mixed crowds and people like Frank Sinatra would come out to see him and Sammy Davis Jr. and just all kinds of famous people. But sadly, the uh, his last performance he was on stage in Cherry Hill and had a heart attack. And when he went down, he hit his head on some of the equipment and was brain dead. He fell into a coma and he was in that coma for the last eight years of his life. Could not speak, obviously could not walk ever again. Never got to sue Nat Turnipole because in the end, he found out that Nat Turnipole actually owed him over a million dollars in royalties and he was gonna sue him until he had the heart attack and went into the coma. But Nat was eventually prosecuted, I believe a year later, was found guilty of defrauding his artist, but then a year and a half after that, it was overturned. So sadly, Jackie spent, I mean, passing away at the age of 49, he spent from 41 to 49 in a nursing home being taken care of and almost was forgotten if it weren't for people like Michael Jackson, Elvis Presley reminding us of how amazing and how talented Jackie really was. Now I believe since his passing, his children have formed a Jackie Wilson Foundation. What this organization tries to do is it tries to help teach children in inner city schools performance and helps them get into loving entertainment and performing and things like that, trying to keep Jackie's memory alive in that regard. So it's pretty cool to know. But like I said, for some reason, I believe he was so far in debt at his passing that they never had a headstone for years until a radio station here in the Detroit area decided to do a fundraiser and give him one. If you've never heard Jackie's music, go to Spotify or somewhere and listen to it. It's so good. Lonely Teardrops, that was the first thing I remember, but then of course, like I said, To Be Loved and Your Love Keeps Lifting Me Higher and Higher. Those are all great songs. But he also did a cover album with like Beatles songs, Doors songs, he did Christmas songs. They're all really good and all really unique because like I said, he had such a wide range in his voice that he could do things that you wouldn't see coming in this song. So. I hope you all enjoyed this. Erica Prince, I hope you enjoyed your sunglass vlog. And uh, I wanna leave you with something a little special. A couple of years ago for my birthday when I lived in Los Angeles, we had a hologram theater and they had the Jackie Wilson show. And I went to that for my birthday and I filmed little snippets. So I'm gonna show you some of the snippets from that show right here. Ladies and gentlemen, Jackie Wilson, Jackie Wilson, Jackie Wilson. From the second Jackie Wilson was born, he knew he was going to be a star. From talent shows to number one hits, his extraordinary vocal range took him to the top.
After that, all he ever did was say whenever he could. My friends, I want to thank Adventures with the McGarry, Tony Kane, Jason Frankenfield, Rosalie Vela, Lynn, Tony Burt, and Tanya Lynn for becoming my newest Patreons. Thank you all for watching and goodbye. <laughs>